Okay, so in this video, we want to find the area of the region in the first quadrant of the xy plane bounded by the curves y equals 4x, y equals 5 minus x over x, and y equals 0, the x-axis. So let us first find the points of intersection between these three curves. Let's first intersect the two more complicated curves with y equals 0. So in the first case, if y is 0, then clearly x must be 0. So we have the point 0, 0, the origin. In the second case, if we intersect this one with this one, well, y is 0. If the numerator is 0, where, of course, obviously, if x is 5, so we have the point 5, 0. So these are very easy points of intersection to find, as this was a very simple curve. The remaining points of intersections are going to be more interesting between the curve 4x and 5 minus x over x. So let's equate both and solve for x. So the first step is multiply by x. So you get 4x squared is equal to 5 minus x. Send these two terms on the left-hand side, and you get 4x squared plus x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we're looking for now the solutions of this polynomial being equal to 0. Now, we can factor here either by inspection or with the quadratic formula. But if you look at the coefficients, 4, 1, and 5, there is an obvious solution being x equals 1. If you replace x by 1, you get 4 plus 1, 5 minus 5 is 0. This is clearly a solution, so we can now find the missing factor using the zero theorem. Since x equals 1 is a zero of this polynomial, automatically x minus 1 will be a factor. And we can find the missing factor, of course, by long division, dividing this quadratic by this linear polynomial. So what times x is 4x squared? simply 4x, multiply by x minus 1, and obtain 4x squared minus 4x, subtract, these two cancel, x negative negative 4x is positive 4x, so 5x minus 5, and now we repeat, what times x is 5x? Of course, plus 5, times x minus 1, 5x minus 5, and we are left with a remainder of 0. So we have a proper division. So the polynomial 4x squared plus x minus 5 factors as x minus 1 times 4x plus 5. And we want to find the x values that will lead this to be equal to 0. So of course the answers are x equals 1 and here, if this is 0, then 4x is negative 5, so x is negative 5 quarters. And then we have our two values of x. But if you recall, we said to find the area of the region in the first quadrant of the xy plane. That's where x is non-negative, so we reject the negative value of x. And we're left with x equals 1 as our only other solution. And we need another y value of this point of intersection. Let's verify that in both cases, we obtain the same y value. So 4 times 1 is 4. 5 minus 1, 4 over 1, 4. So we have our three points of intersection, and we're good to go. Now, before we sketch these three curves and the points of intersection, these two lines are very easy to sketch. This one may look a little bit more puzzling, but we can rewrite it slightly differently to make this curve look more familiar. And the idea is simply to divide through 5 and x by x, so we obtain 5 over x minus x over x, which is 1. And now this should look more familiar. Think of how can you construct this from the familiar curve 1 over x. So you take 1 over x, multiply by 5, so you make the curve 5 times higher, 
and then simply subtract 1. So scale it down by 1. So this is essentially 1 over x, 5 times higher, and then we shift it down by 1. So y equals 4x, then 5 over x minus 1, again roughly speaking is about 1 over x, and now of course y equals 0 being the x-axis, and we clearly see our three points of intersection. If you recall this was the origin, so 0, 0. This was the point 5, 0, so x is 5. And this other point was our third point of intersection, 1, 4. And of course if you notice my picture is clearly not up to scale, but that doesn't matter. All we need is to be able to see fairly accurately the region that we're interested in. Scale or not up to scale is not really important. So we clearly see now that we want the area of this region. So now as always we have two options. We can cover up the region with vertical rectangles or with horizontal rectangles. In this solution we will cover up the region with vertical rectangles. But if you notice there is something interesting. As you go from 0 to 1, if you draw a generic rectangle, the position is of course an arbitrary x value, the width of the rectangle is dx, and if you draw another generic rectangle between 1 and 5, again its width is dx, an infinitesimal change along the x-axis, and its position also is an arbitrary x value. What's interesting here is that in each case we will need to find the area of the rectangle, therefore the height of the rectangle. But from 0 to 1, the height of the rectangle is clearly given by 4x. From 1 to 5, the height of the rectangle is given now by 5 over x minus 1. So here, since we have two separate sets of measurements for our generic rectangles, we need to break up the region from 0 to 1, this will lead to a first integral, then from 1 to 5, a different second integral. So then the total area of our region will be obtained by the area of the first region from 0 to 1. So first we find the area of the rectangle, the height again is 4x times the width dx, And to get the total area, because this is only the area of this infinitesimal rectangle, to get the total area of our region between x equals 0 and x equals 1, we have to sum the area of each infinitesimal rectangle from 0 to 1. But that's only giving us the area of part of the region, so we have to add the area of the second part, now the area of the rectangle here is the height, 5 over x minus 1, times the width dx, so the area of our second generic rectangle, and of course to get the total area of this region we have to sum the area of each generic rectangle, but now from 1 to 5 and adding up these two definite integrals lead us to adding up the area of the first part of the region and then the second part of the region. So this will give us the total area of the region and of course we use to find each definite integral the fundamental theorem of calculus. So first antiderivative to 4x is 2x squared, right? Power rule x squared over 2, but 4 over 2 is 2. And as always you can check the derivative of this is 
of course, 4x. Five over x minus one, well, five is a constant multiple. The integral of one over x is the ln of x in absolute value. Minus, of course, x. And again, if you check, if you differentiate this, you get five times derivative of ln one over x minus the derivative of x, which is one. So we have the antiderivative, but now we evaluate from one to five. So let's plug it in. In the first case, we get 2x squared when x is 1, so simply 2, minus 2x squared when x is 0, 0, plus the second expression. So this function of x when x is 5, so 5 ln of 5 minus 5, minus the antiderivative when x is 1, so 5 ln of 1, but ln of 1 is 0, so this term goes away, and we're left with minus 1. If we simplify, we have a single multiple of ln of 5, so 5 ln of 5, and then 2 minus 5, negative 3, negative, negative 1 plus 1, negative 2. And now we have the exact area of the region. 5 ln of 5 minus 2, but it's nice to get a feeling for how large or how small is the area of the region. So if you use your calculator, you'll find that 5 ln of 2 minus 2, 5, 5 ln of 5, sorry, minus 2, is approximately 6.047. So, our conclusion is that if we look in the first quadrant of the xy plane, the area of the region bounded by the x-axis, y equals 0, the line y equals 4x, and the curve y equals 5 over x minus 1 is 5 ln of 5 minus 2, which is approximately 6.047.